just like East Troy High School, McGuanago advanced both its boys and girls teams to the state tournament. McGuanago actually took it one step farther with both of their teams reaching the championship games. The McGuanago girls would have a tough contest in the title game against Milwaukee Riverside. First, let's flash back to the Indian semifinal matchup against Classic 8 Conference rival Arrowhead. McQuanago gets off to a red hot start. Freshman Bree Serra, who has already verbally committed to play at UW Green Bay, scorched the Nets for 13 points in the first half as her team quickly built a big lead. Senior standout Jenny Tuttle scored eight of her game high 22 in the first half. She also tallied five rebounds, four assists, and four steals in the game. Kelly Smith tried to keep the Warhawks in this one, scoring two of her team high 14. But McQuanago led by 19 after a quarter and rolled to a 20 point victory to advance to the D1 championship game. And when they came out of that fast start, it just seemed like it was McQuanago's night. We did what we could to try to make some adjustments to try to find the basket so we could get it, creep it up a little bit, help these girls believe that this was possible. But it was just a difficult thing to do when McQuanago's playing so well. In the finals, McQuanago meets a Milwaukee Riverside squad that carried a 22 game winning streak and a mission to bring home the gold ball. Close game in the first half. Check out the sweet assist here from Jenny Tuttle to Courtney McKeever. Amani Wilborn was the offensive standout in the first half for Riverside, scoring nine of her 15 in the half. Lady Tigers by two at intermission. Just like McGuanago, Riverside features a standout freshman. Alana Johnson's three-pointer pushes the lead to seven early in the third quarter. Now, unlike the semifinals, McGuanago struggled shooting in the title game. 6'5'' senior Brianna Lewis had a little something to do with that. She had three blocks in the game. Amber Gray helps keep this one close. She scored eight consecutive points for the Indians. They're down seven, though, after three. In the fourth quarter, check out Alana Johnson showing the feathery soft touch on the floater. Riverside now up 10. Then Johnson does it again, this time with the spin move and then the runner for two more of her 15. Lady Tigers lead by a dozen. They go on to the 55-41 triumph, claiming Riverside's first ever girls basketball state championship. The Indians, as their boys team did, bring home the silver, finishing their season with a record of 25 and three. They're really good and uh, we didn't play our best game and that's called life and that happens in tournaments all the time. We're a really good team and we got great kids and, and uh, everything's okay. For Riverside, it was an emotional victory and the fulfillment of a goal they set at the start of the season. Uh, it feels like a family. My, me and my sisters did it. We worked hard to get to this point, and we got this goal ball. Through the final seconds, everything just sat in. We are getting closer and closer to the end, knowing that we were ready, we were reaching our goal, we're coming closer and closer to reaching our goal. And I think the joy just sat in, and we, we, we knew we made it. I mean, I'm going in next year, the same thing, goal ball or bust. We want to be at the top. We don't want to be second, we don't want to be third. We want to make sure we're doing everything in our power to be the most successful girls high school basketball team in Division I in Wisconsin. 